Gerald, it's always good to see you. Um, I love your energy. I love who you are. And I love what you have to say to people every time. So I'm going to let you loose for 30 minutes. I don't want you to pull. Don't pull any punches, okay? <laughs> give, us, give us Gerald Salente today. Well, thank you. Um, you know, the, the, the cast of people that you have, you know, Mr. Kawasaki, uh, Peter Schiff, uh, Harry Dent, on and on, Mr. Miller. It, it's, it's an all-star cast. And they're going to be talking a lot about the economy. I'm a trend forecaster. We look beyond just economics. We look at geopolitics. Matter of fact, I came up with the word clean food uh, back in 1993. Uh, the gourmet coffee trend back in 19, uh, early, late 1989. All you got is ground coffee. You know, so we look at a lot of different things. And of course, you know, I, I got my track record by calling the 1987 stock market crash. I remember Peter Schiff and I on ABC when the uh, panic of 08 hit. I took that domain name out in 2007, the Asian currency crisis. Our magazine, the Trends Journal, uh, the October 1999 issue, uh, we had forecast the dot-com bust. We said it would bust by the second quarter of 2000. And it did in March of 2000. It was, that was the beginning of the end of it. I'm mentioning this because all things are connected. Or as Chief Seattle said, all things are connected like the blood which unites us all. Yes, we all know how what danger we are in with the economy. You know, they, it's unprecedented. They started the COVID war. And this is the crap that they're shoving down people's mouths. Pick up any newspaper, listen to the morons on the mainstream news. They keep blaming different things, quote, on the pandemic. Now, not on the pandemic, about these arrogant little boys and girls called politicians. Hey, I'm the governor of New York. Lock down your business. I'll tell you when to reopen it, all based on political science. Hey, morons and imbeciles, stand six feet apart. The wind only blows in straight lines six feet apart, so stand in six feet apart. Oh, and by the way, when you wear those masks outside, you can't go swimming. Don't put your kids on swings. Oh, your chances of getting it outside were only less than 1%. I'm talking factual data. We write a magazine. I only put facts in it, and then we give the analysis and our forecasts. The damage that has been done by fighting the COVID war is incalculable. Who the hell wants to commute an hour and a half on the LIE each way to go into Manhattan? Listen, man, I've been working at home. I'll work at home. I'll work at home a couple, I'll come in a couple of days a week, but I'm not going to do this anymore. All right, work at home. Oh, what's your office occupancy rates now around the world? On average, probably about 45 to 50%. Oh, the commercial business real estate sector, it's going to be great. And all those businesses that used to depend on commuters, they're going to do fine like the 30,000 dry, 30, dry cleaners that went out of business. Like the 100,000 small and medium-sized businesses that are going out of business in Italy. The first country to follow the Chinese way when they launched the COVID war in January 2020, the year of the rat. Happy Lunar New Year. And one little clown after another, these power-hungry little freaky boys and girls decided to, I'll tell you what to do. What are you talking about, freedom and peace? You don't have any. Oh, but we're going to bring democracy around the world. That's the crap that they shoot out, and I'm getting to that because the Ukraine war. This is big. From COVID war to Ukraine war to world war. 
World War III has begun. Again, we take a global-nomic view of trend forecasting, making connections between different fields. I just gave you a little bit of the crap that they're spewing out that the imbeciles and morons swallow. The lines about all these economic problems are a result of the pandemic. Oh, yeah, the zero interest rate policy to keep artificially propping up the equity markets and the housing markets. Oh, yeah. The trillions and trillions of dollars that governments pumped into the system to keep it up. The COVID war, the damage it's done is incalculable. It has destroyed the lives and livelihoods of billions. They suck the joy out of life. And as I say and have been saying, when all else fails, they take you to war. What followed the Great Depression? World War II. World War II. What followed the dot-com bust? The war on terror. The day the Twin Towers came down, the Nasdaq was down 66% for when the dot-com bust started to bust. And then everybody forgot it. They were so damn stupid, so damn stupid, that they listened to little clowns, like little Georgie Bush. A little daddy's boy. My daddy was George Bush. My grandpa was Prescott Bush. Oh, the guy that sold stuff to the Nazis? Yeah, yeah, that one. Mission accomplished. The Iraq War, you like that one? 88% of the people swallowed Bush's crap to go to war in Afghanistan. Great job. Oh, terrific. 20-year war, trillions of dollars spent. I'm mentioning this because World War III has started. So to me, safe haven assets. I don't give financial advice. Gold is number one. I'm going to go back to 9-11. I'm watching TV, CNBC. I used to watch it in the morning. And the guy said, yeah, we're cutting away now. There seems to be a, a plane hit the uh, World Trade Center. You know, let's not get excited about this. I'm not kidding. This is the way he put it. And I'm watching it, having a cup of coffee. And then all of a sudden you see that thing. Poof. The first thing I did was I called up my girlfriend, Marie-Pierre, a French woman. She was living up near me. Matter of fact, her brother... Francois was the left shoulder of Jacques Chirac and Mitterrand, the presidents. And my close combat teacher used to go to Palais Elysee and work out with these guys. I said, Marie Pierre, get your money out of the bank. What do you mean, Gerald? I said, get your money out of the bank. I'm thinking if this thing is real and planes are going down the Hudson River, they may hit Indian Point nuclear power plant. If that thing blows up, it's going to be chaos like nothing you've seen. I had my guns, gold, and a getaway plan. So I call up the bank. I had certificates of deposit. Back then, ancient history, the year 2001, used to get pretty good money when you got certificates of deposit. I said, listen, I want my CDs transferred to the bank in Rhinebeck, where I lived at the time. I'm sorry, Mr. Salenti. Certificates of deposit... Traded on Wall Street. And Wall Street is closed. You can't get your money. So basically, screw you. And when I'm going back to the Ukraine war and all things are connected, they just blew up the bridge in Crimea. You think this thing isn't going to have a happy ending? Nobody's talking about peace, by the way. Not a peep about peace. By the way, I launched Occupy Peace and had a big rally here in July with Judge Andrew Napolitano, Scott Ritter, Gary Null, Phil Giraldi, former CIA guy. 
No one's talking about peace, only ramping up war. $67 billion of my money, taxpayer money, went to Ukraine to keep bloodying this war. I'm mentioning this because what if you hear the story of they just hacked the banks. But don't worry, we're going to do everything we can to get you back your money. We are at, again, World War III has begun. So why would you leave your money in the bank? They're giving you crap on it and they're making money on you. So I told you my story of 9-11. Oh, then there was this guy named Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Turn in your gold. Turn in your gold. I love this crap that America's fighting, bringing freedom and democracy to other countries and they're robbing it from us. Oh, and all you people over there in Australia, you love Gallipoli. Get involved in this one too. You could have a Gallipoli 2.0. We are at war, just like the crap that they shoot down your throat when you're a little kid going to school. World War I began when they assassinated the Archduke Ferdinand at Sarajevo. What the hell is an Archduke and what's a Sarajevo? It was building up before that. Before... Pearl Harbor, people forget the United States was at war with Japan, put sanctions on, they couldn't get any oil. Over 80% of the Americans were against the war. Boop, Pearl Harbor, I'm a Yankee doodle dandy, Yankee doodle do or die. We are at that stage. No one, very few people are talking about peace, and when they are, they're shot down, like Musk and Roger Waters. So I'm just saying to you that we are in a critical time and that it's very important that you know where your money is and how safe it should be. And to me, again, the number one asset is gold. And again, I don't give financial advice, but you know, I mentioned I've been doing this for 45 years. And the beginning of it was, well, I used to work in DC. And the Iranian conflict broke out. And just like the media today, you know, they teach you to hate Iran. Nobody knew about the facts, about how the United States overthrew the democratically elected government of uh, Mossadegh when he nationalized the oil fields. The facts came out only in, in, in 2017. The only newspaper to report on it was the uh, Financial Times, not the Wall Street Journal, the others, about Winston Churchill you know, getting involved with it and saying we have to get that oil back. But the point being, I knew this thing was real. But while people were just focused on the fear and hysteria, I said, what's going to happen? I said, you know, gold prices are going to go up and oil prices are going to go up. I placed a $5,000 bet. And I turned it into almost three quarters of a million dollars playing the futures markets. I lost most of it. I ended up, well, I, I didn't lose my, you know, it, I, I was able to quit my job and I started the Trends Research Institute. What I'm saying to you is look at the facts for what they are. I'm a political atheist. I was the assistant to the secretary of the New York State Senate at 26 years old. I ran major political campaigns in Westchester County at the time in the 70s, the richest county in America. I was a chief government affairs specialist for the chemical industry. I was killing environmental legislation at the height of the environmental movement. And then I started to grow up. You know, it takes time. I'd be eating dinner with my father, may he rest in peace. And he'd say to me, you know, son, 
They say that youth is wasted on the young. And then he'd say they were talking about you. And that's what it is. I mean, you grow up. But I'm mentioning this because I wouldn't know what's going on if I wasn't on the other side. So my warning is that World War III has started and there's going to be a false flag or a nuclear strike. They asked, by the way, Einstein, what kind of weapons will be used to fight the Third World War? This is a cat that knew a thing or two about atomic bombs. He said, I don't know. But they'll be using sticks and stones to fight the Fourth. People better do something for peace because it's the same imbecilic, psychopathic, pathological sociopaths that gave us the COVID war. When you're in an airplane, you got to wear your mask. But when you eat and drink, you could take your mask off because the COVID knows when you're eating and drinking and it won't bother you? When you walk in a restaurant, put that mask on. But when you sit down, you can eat. Because the COVID knows you're sitting down, they don't go at that level, and you're opening your mouth and putting food and drinks in it, it's okay. I'm mentioning this to show you the stupidity and the arrogance. Look what's going on in South Korea and North Korea. They're shooting missiles over. In Japan, what do they do? An air raid drill. Oh, yeah. You're going to bomb shelter. It'll be lovely when you get out after a nuclear attack. And speaking of bomb shelters and air raids and stupidity and the morons in charge, when I was a kid, they had air raid drills because the Russians were going to drop atomic bombs. They had us hiding under a desk. Like that was going to make a, a difference. And then when we got bigger, they made us put our hands and back our heads and stand against the wall in the hall of the, of the school and say, if you see a flash, don't look at it. If I see a flash, I'll be dust. I'm mentioning this because of the stupidity involved. They have inflated the equity markets with all of this artificial money. Oh, and the BS spewing out over in Europe. Oh, they're going to raise interest rates again. What's the, um, what's the inflation rate? Nine, ten percent or something? And, and, and what's, what's your interest rate? 0.75 basis points? Oh, if you borrow money from the International Mafia, Federal, excuse me, Monetary Fund, you have to put your interest rate one percent above inflation. So in Europe, yeah your interest rate should be about 9.5%. And the crap that they kept spewing out, oh, when inflation hits 2%, we're going to raise interest rates. Oh, no, this isn't real inflation. It's temporary. Powell, Lagarde, Yellen. Oh, no, no, it's not real. It's just transitory. And now in the woke world, let's call it transgender, Tori. Let's really be stupid. They knew this inflation's real. They did it to artificially prop up the markets. And that's where we're at. I want to show you the Trends Journal from spring of 2014. You see that happy face? This is an article written by Dr. Paul Craig Roberts, former assistant treasury secretary under Ronald Reagan. We're very good friends. Matter of fact, he came up here in 2014 when I launched Occupy Peace. He's a man of peace. This is the headline. Washington is driving the world to the final war. World hegemony is not a right America has earned. 
And then he goes on to write, Washington confronts Russia with a strategic threat. Yep. Ukraine president, the perfect opportunity for Washington to advance its hegemonic agenda. In a speech at the National Press Club in December 2013, this is a few months before the, it happened, Assistant Secretary of State Victoria Nuland boasted that Washington has invested $5 billion in non-governmental aids, NGO, to Ukraine for the purpose of the NGOs, quote, to teach democracy. However, Ukraine already had a democracy. In reality, the NGO organizations are U.S. fifth columns that can be used to organize protests and to provide support for Washington candidates for the Ukraine government. And he goes on to say how the Ukraine government would be overthrown. Before that, we wrote the Sochi Olympics were going on at the same time and how they sold fear and hysteria to tell people not to go to the Olympics. Veteran security consultant Bill Rathborn hopes he's wrong about the upcoming Winter Olympics, he told Yahoo News. Quote, the security threat is higher than it's ever been in the history of Olympic Games. In my opinion, it's not a matter of whether there will be some incident. It's just a matter of how bad it's going to be. Again, pure propaganda, pure hatred. They're leading us into war. They got the people, they've been teaching this stuff again. They're taking down the statue of Catherine the Great in Ukraine. The statue because she didn't like the Ukrainians, they say. You mean this is going back since 1750, a border war between these two countries? This is, I'm telling you, if, there, if there's no peace, there's going to be war and hell on earth. So again, in looking at the big picture, and again, you have a great cast of people from Kiyosaki to Dent and, and, and Schiff and on and on, you know, that are going to talk a lot about other economic things that, you know, in, in giving you the, the tight picture of the economy, I'm giving you the overall view. And that's what we do as trend forecasters. And again, all things are connected like the blood which unites us all. And this war and what's going on. And again, look at oil prices. Oh, that's the other thing. They're blaming the high inflation on the sanctions. That's what I want to say before. No, and they're talking about the COVID war, uh, the, excuse me, the pandemic, blaming on the pandemic and not the politicians. The sanctions, you could, start, you could thank the imbeciles that put the sanctions on Russia, all you people, particularly in Europe. And if you listen to Biden's line, we're going to punish Putin with the sanctions. They didn't punish Putin. They're punishing the people. But if you read the Financial Times, the Wall Street Journal, anything, they're blaming the high energy prices on Russia rather than the sanctions put on Russia. And then the blowing up of the Nord Stream pipeline and throwing the crap out that Russia blew it up. Yeah, I guess they blew up the, 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 you know, America probably blew up the World Trade Center. Hey, if Russia blew up the pipeline, and maybe they probably blew up the Crimea Bridge. We have sick people in charge. The media is going to distort it. And you're not getting any good information from them. And as I said, when all else fails, they take you to war and it's failing. We are going into the worst economic and socioeconomic crisis, geopolitical and socioeconomic crisis in modern history. And the devastation that was caused with the COVID war and now with the raising interest rates and they can't keep you making the economy fake anymore you're going to see a disaster that's unprecedented. And of course, silver is another good one I like. You know, prices are way down. You know, by the way, everybody's talking about climate change, climate change, climate change. 
and you silver is used in you know everything from computers to sun you know but uh, the um no one's talking about nuclear war that much but they're very worried about climate change <laughs> oh yeah the climate will change by the way the studies came out when a nuclear war happens we're going into the new ice age but don't worry it'll only last about 2,000 years. So from solar panels to high tech, you need silver. And to me, silver is very underpriced. And it has the uh, opportunity to really go much, much higher. So thank you very much. And um, if you have any questions, I'm sure the others are gonna have a lot of answers. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Gerald. Uh, it's fantastic. Look, um, uh, look, I'm sure we'd have hundreds of questions for, for you. Unfortunately, we can't do that today. I've got to say, Gerald, I think you'd be a damn good uh, dinner date. I'd love to uh, talk to you and uh, uh, not look romantically in your eyes. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, you know. <laughs> Did you think I was propositioning you there for a moment? <laughs> <But> <laughs> At any rate, you, um, you're so interesting, uh, Gerald, and what you have to say and, and your passion, uh, I just love it. I know there's, there's so much more and so much more to hear from you, but, of course, um, time has beaten us. Thank you so much for being with us. Uh, we love it. Um, the comments that are coming through are fantastic. And uh, I'll let you go to your day. I gather it's some um, late evening there. It's a, a fun weekend this weekend, so I'm going to go out and have it. I don't know. I don't know who it was. Maybe it was Jesus, Muhammad, or Buddha. But one of them said, you better boogie right now before it's too late, before the lights go out. So you better boogie before the lights go out because tomorrow is iffy. So I got to go out and boogie. I think when you're 100 years of age, Gerald, you you were still dancing in the boogie. <laughs> All right. Thank you, my friend. I will let you go and we'll go to our next speaker. Bye-bye now. Thank you very much.